Howdy folks, uh, Elliot here again. We have a Kaleido demo with Sofia Lopez. Quick background on her. Sofia is a founder and chief operating officer of Kaleido, the number one blockchain as a service globally. Um, its clients include one third of the world's largest 20 banks and 80% of the world's supply chain leaders. Prior to Kaleido, Sofia led IBM's blockchain platform team uh, launching the industry's first blockchain managed service. Previously, Sophia was an IBM executive with multi-billion P&L responsibility. Uh, Sophia is an engineering undergraduate degree from Harvard University and MBA from UNC Chapel Hill. Uh, Sophia, super happy to have you here. How are you doing today? Good. Uh, thanks, Elliot, for the awesome introduction. It's <laughs> great to talk to you again. I right. see we have another guest as well, Nick. Welcome. I didn't know you were going to be here. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I was thinking about the entrepreneurship challenge with USC that was announced today. And we're really excited to support that here at Kaleido. Nick is actually our tech enablement lead. So he works um, supporting hackathons and working with universities around the world. So I, he personally committed to be standing by to help any teams building on blockchain. So I thought it'd be more fun if the two of us did the session together. Think fun fact is Nick is one of the first five people in all of IBM to actually work on blockchain. He was one of the very, very early people to a business, you know, now that scaled out its own business unit. They've got thousands of people working over there. So he's been in enterprise blockchain for half a decade now. So he's a wow. great for some of these uh, students who are going to be entering and building some awesome projects. So, Well, thanks, Nick. Thanks, Sophia, for joining. Uh, I do want to mention if you are in the chat, if you guys want to engage with our present, uh, the presentation, you can leave questions. Um, if you're interested in that challenge, you can just type exclamation mark challenge. It'll bring up the link to that, uh, what she was talking about. And uh, yeah. So um, I have a couple slides I'm going to show, and then we'll go into a demo as well. So is, okay, is perfect. Work, Elliot, and perfect. if you, um, I guess if, Elliot, Dennis, Mark, or Evan, if you guys have any questions or just, we want to make this interactive. I know we, I know Dennis and team had a really great um, um, face to face event planned, which unfortunately right. um, scheduled. I'm really happy that we met, you know, you, you guys are leading the virtual event here, but we still want to try to keep this interactive. So um, we're open to any sort of questions along the way. So I'm going to share a couple some slides first. Um, so uh, we did the intros already, and in terms of what we'd like to cover today, um, just going to talk a little bit about the state of enterprise blockchain. I know there have been some really great speakers that are talking about um, University of South Carolina, the sort of uh, challenge more broadly in South Carolina from little political perspective and just the ecosystem building a foundation for new business and bringing this emerging tech in to re catapult the local economies and business people, which I think is amazing. It's actually one of my favorite things about the conference is that you have that mission and focus, um, which I actually haven't seen before from many other states. So South Carolina's ahead. Um, but, um, and then just, you know, we'll do the, the live demo, but I, I from looking at the sessions, it, I wanted to just take a little bit of a step back and make sure we covered on um, from an enterprise blockchain and just a business aspect. You know, what are some of the problems we see clients trying to solve with enterprise blockchain? And it's really goes to the transparency and trust. So having a common view of shared data, and there's all these sorts of areas just about, you know, better, faster, cheaper, just, taking less days to settle a process, less disputes, more visibility, more efficiency, um, you know, and eliminating fraud. One thing we see is Kaleido, we're working with um, consortium blockchain projects around the world is, you know, we're really seeing this ecosystem economy is, is here. It started, you know, uh, other parts of the world have more mature models around this. And in some respects where you see these industry sectors dissolving and now you see the blend of you know, the bank and the healthcare and the commerce all coming together in these business to business networks where you have some people who are competitors now collaborating because they realize, and I, the end of the speaker from FedEx did a great job. He was saying their CEO realized a couple of years ago, it's not just about FedEx, it's about the whole ecosystem and it's bigger than the four walls of like one individual enterprise. 
So we've definitely been seeing that um, in the networks we're running in production. And I wanted to just share a couple of key trends we've seen this year um, post, post COVID. Uh, one thing we've seen is that COVID's really accelerated digital transformation. These projects have really gone from being something that sits with the innovation team to now you know, being a line of business, P&L, a profit and loss leader imperative. You know, they need to digitally transform the way, you know, the insurance um, companies are doing claims virtually that, you know, the way trade finance is happening, you don't have traders behind phones and faxes to do these letters of credit anymore. Um, before the pandemic, Mercer Consulting had um, polled all of the leading companies and they had uh, only two out of five said that they were digitally um, enabled or digitally transformed. And now you can see, well, what, you know, what about the three out of five who now are in the midst of the situation we're in? There's really scrambling to see, um, really green light these projects and move very quickly. Um, we see clients this year, even before the pandemic, were saying, hey, we don't need to prove blockchain out anymore. We don't need to do proof, proof of concept. We want to invest the money, build on a platform and infrastructure. Uh, which would already be an advanced pilot. What does that mean? Real data, real companies around a real problem, and then be able to go into production on that same platform. Um, that said, I know I've been talking to some people in the South Carolina ecosystem and, and they're saying, well, we, you know, we don't really know how to use blockchain. We haven't started yet. I'll say it's not too late to start. And, you know, thinking big can really start with thinking, starting small. So you can start with you know, learning, getting used to the tech, really zoning in on the use cases. And sometimes you know, there's internal efficiencies you can get within like your own company or partners to start with that. And then you can move to the bolder cross company shared data use cases. And then of course these you know, much grander aspirations around public private collaborations or industry ecosystems can follow from there. Um, one thing we very much kept in mind at Kaleido is you know, how can we get you quickly so that the tech is not a barrier, you know, going from that proof of concept to pilot with real data and then to production, highest levels of enterprise grade security, reliability, availability, and scalability. Um, it's interesting, the whole conference is about blockchain, but when you're actually building out uh, enterprise solution, the blockchain node as a service and sort of running the blockchain layer is only five to 10% of the whole solution. So we actually see you know, as one of the learnings over the last five years and doing this for half decade is there's all of these layers of traditional enterprise IT that you need to um, have available to you to quickly build these solutions out. And this is what Kaleido's approach has been to um, provide these, you know, 40 plus plug and play services so you can quickly build these networks together. And the, the real key around building these business networks and making that easier is combining the tech with the business relationships and understanding that the real business problem you're trying to solve and the return on investment you can get from that. But you do want to remove all the friction from onboarding new members. So some people want to run on AWS, others maybe on Azure, others want to run themselves in their own data center. So networks need to be able to do that seamlessly just with a couple of clicks. Nick is going to show you that. And then flexibility and choice on um, the winning enterprise protocols we've seen are Ethereum, Porta, and Fabric. This is just a peek of like what our product looks like. You can actually use it for free and build a live blockchain network in less than five minutes. Um, but the blockchain as a service is really just 5% five, 5 of what you're building and you need all these other layers of traditional sort of enterprise IT. And a lot of times when people look at, hey, I wanna build a blockchain solution, um, you know, you can start with the open source code and say, I'm just going to run it somewhere. There's all these other layers below the iceberg. And I'd honestly say in the last five years, one reason that we founded Kaleido um, three years ago was because the, you know, the maintenance, support, the DevOps, R&D, compliance, research, et cetera, could, could cost you literally tens of millions of dollars if you were trying to do this yourself. Whereas you really want to focus on the business value. All of these companies are ones who are running us today, you know, in production, sort of automating business processes, bringing in smart contracts, new token models and incentives, getting real business benefits. We have about 80% of the world's uh, supply chain for grain running on our platform. So the idea of be, you know, being able to eliminate a lot of inefficiencies from decades old systems that some of these um, bigger companies are running on. In some cases, I mentioned they just never, companies that never digitize these processes. 
So although in the case of Congo, they're very, our third of large, largest banks in the world are on this platform, they've transacted a billion dollars, but previous to this platform, it was basically emails, fax, and phone calls. So, um, but you're seeing also top line business benefits, uh, Kroger and T-Mobile, T-Mobile Tuesdays on your mobile phone using uh, digital coupons um, to just give better coupons, eliminate a lot of fraud and waste and just dropping that right into people's phones. So when they're in Kroger, they can get, you know, $3 off every $10 they spend. And they've had, you know, 500,000 people downloading these coupons in their wallets in the space of a couple hours because they just got better coupons. These are people who didn't even realize they were using blockchain. So that's um, pretty exciting. And I uh, will share these materials afterwards, but, um, you know, trade all from trade finance to financial inclusion to uh, digital collectibles, Sony, Fox and Heineken or others who are like the next gen of get a uh, generation of ways to engage with your audiences, supply chain. Um, I mentioned the grain, but there's also all, all from uh, tuna to diamonds and um, everything in between helping solve with that yeah, um, social issues, UN sustainability goals, like how, how can you help with the World Wildlife Foundation make sure that when people donate the money, um, it's going to the right sources. And these are curated, vetted, you know, trusted um, places and causes and missions where you know that you um, have the, all the benefits of blockchain to make sure the money is going to where it should be. World Bank and IMF are others who we've worked with closely and have run on us various projects um, uh, from the very early days all the way through uh, carbon credits more recently. So um, all of this, you need enterprise grade. So that's all something we handle from you for you all the way for 24 seven support, um, high availability, disaster recovery, business continuity. And then um, you can get started with a free tier, which Nick is gonna show you. So I do encourage everyone who's following along, you could go to Kaleido.io, just get started now for a get started account. Feel free to follow along with Nick and a special big welcome to the USC participants. I know not everyone who's watching is technical. So I also wanted to uh, provide three of our most popular white papers um, that talk about really what does decentralized um, networks, what does that mean in enterprise? So it's a great um, white paper our CEO wrote um, a little deeper on the tech, talking about permissions and privacy. So what does privacy really look like and enterprise networks? And then people often have questions about, you know, which way to start just with the open source technology. And we've got a really great analysis. Our head of protocol actually is the only person we're aware of in the world who's a contributor and maintainer to the top three protocols. So with that, I will pass it to Nick for the demo. Will you see the speaker or are you on? Uh, I thought, okay, hold on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, That's just to kind of wrap that up, it's like you guys are speeding up the digitization process, you know? You guys are really making uh, business more efficient, which is awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Ellie. And hopefully that was helpful to people. It was a uh, speedy flyby. <laughs> yeah, I think the practical demo is, is going to be better, especially if you're following along at home, which I encourage. For sure. Yeah, thanks to Sophia for the Kaleido 101 and the, the macro business context of Kaleido and, and blockchain, enterprise blockchain in general. So, so I'm going to give you guys um, uh, a rather 101 tour of Kaleido. We'll try to stay away from crypto primitives and P2P messaging and a lot of the esoteric stuff that comes along with blockchain. So just a quick agenda. We'll go ahead and create a consortium, a business network from scratch. Um, we'll create what we call an environment, which is actually an isolated blockchain within that business network. Then I'll go ahead and switch gears and I'll show you uh, kind of what a, um, a bona fide consortium might look like with lots of resources and live incoming transactions. Uh, and then I'll finish it up by kind of putting a bow on it and, and we'll give you an example of what a real world use case might look like and we'll marry that with actually a full stack application. Uh, so try to give you um, sort of the, the full meal here for Kaleido. So let's get started. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by creating um, a network or a consortium. Uh, and everything inside of Kaleido is very intuitive, very click button simple. So we'll just call this the uh, South Carolina Business Network. 
for lack of creativity. And I can upload some legalese or some rhetoric, or I can attach a link uh, leading off to the bylaws for this business consortium. I'll click next. Now I'm going to whitelist a home region. Um, this is going to store the metadata for our business network. And it's also going to be a whitelisted cloud and a whitelisted region that's going to be able to host nodes and host resources, a lot of the services that we have in Collider that Sophia showed you in that chart. So we'll create this as the home region on AWS in Columbus, Ohio. And now one of the great features about Kaleido is we can turn this into a multi-region or even a cross-cloud business network. So there isn't this isolation if you have an existing cloud estate in AWS and someone starts your business network on Azure. You have that flexibility and that cross-compatibility. So just for um, the sake of the demo, I'll whitelist all the clouds and all the regions and I'll click finish. And all of these will be available to me when I get into the blockchain piece. So this means members, if they have privacy reasons and want to keep their data in their own country or region, they have the freedom to do that. So we find that often can be important for network members. Yeah, precisely. So, so here's the namespace. Here's the business network that we have here. It's just very baseline scaffolding. Uh, and what I can do is I can build out the composition of my network in one of two ways. I can onboard external participants and I can decentralize the ownership of my business network. Uh, and as the founder, I could embed permissions. I could allocate my full root admin permissions or I could temper or rescind some of those permissions. Um, another great strategy for you know, early development and MVPs is to sort of mock out the future participation of your, of your network. And we have this construct called memberships that makes it very easy to to do that. So I'll create a, a, a mock organization called Organization XYZ, but you could mimic this as a bank, as someone in your supply chain network, as a pharmaceutical partner, as a trading partner, etc. cetera. Uh, anything that's applicable to your vertical or to your use case. Uh, and this is important because every node, every security credential, and every service inside of Kaleido gets bound to a membership. So you have that logical isolation and that logical attachment of a service to a membership. So that's the network level. And now we'll get into sort of the exciting pieces into the blockchain piece. And our nomenclature for a blockchain is an environment. And within your business network, you can have many, many environments. So we follow along with those standard DevOps um, paradigms where you could have a staging and you could have a pre-production and ultimately a production. So the first step is to choose the protocol. Kaleido offers um, two of the enterprise protocols. Uh, Fabric will be joining us at some point in the future, but we have Enterprise Ethereum and Corda. So I'm gonna show you a demo using Enterprise Ethereum here. I'll go through the Ethereum door. I'll choose a name for my environment. And like I said, we can have many environments. So I'll use one that I call dev. Now I'm gonna choose the deployment orchestration. Do I want this to be cloud only, meaning I'll have AWS and those Azure regions available for deployment? Or do I wanna turn this into a hybrid, uh, a hybrid orchestration that supports on-premise deployments? Uh, maybe you have a, a security mandate that says, you know, your private keys and your runtime infrastructure needs to be on-premise. So we, we support those, um, those mandates as well here. I'll go cloud only for this demo, click next. And now we can bespokely configure the protocol and the algorithm. Uh, and I'm not gonna go ad nauseum on these, but some of these support higher levels of privacy and they have different consensus algorithms along with them. Uh, one of the real popular ones for just getting started is Geth and Proof of Authority. So I'll go with that one for now. I'll click Finish. And here's the namespace for our environment. This is a completely isolated firewall namespace. Uh, if I am going to deploy a node in a different cloud or a different region, all of that layer two virtual networking, that secure traffic, that's all handled, handled under the covers by Kaleido. So now I'm going to bring my network, my environment to life by creating a node. I'll call it node one. I'm going to bind it to one of my memberships, and now I'm going to choose where in the world, what cloud uh, I want that I want that to be deployed on. I'm just going to go with AWS in Ohio for simplicity. I could choose to integrate native cloud services with my node, key protections, backups, log streams, private traffic, uh, and even role-based access control. Uh, these are a bit more sophisticated and elaborate, so we'll skip these for the time being, but we allow you to leverage a lot of the existing constructs that you have in your cloud estate. Um, the last piece of business is to choose the footprint size for your node. So based on the scale of your application, your architecture, and the anticipated throughput, we have different sizes that support those workloads, small, medium, and large. Choose if you want your node to participate in the algorithm, and then just go ahead and click finish, and you've now brought your private blockchain to life. So I'll quickly go ahead and add a second node. I'll bind it to our other membership. I'll just click next super quickly here. 
and these will take about 30 seconds to come up and fully initialize. So while these guys are coming up, I'm going to hop back to my network layer here, my consortium level, and I'm going to create what we call a contract project. And I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to speak to Ethereum, to speak to these smart contracts on Kaleido. Um, so I'm going to create a namespace. I'm going to create a contract project. Again, I'm going to go through the Ethereum door here. I'm going to bind it to ABC. And I'm going to use a very simple piece of code uh, called simple storage here. And I'm going to import this from a GitHub repository. So for any of the technical folks on the call, I'll quickly touch on this, this smart contract here. But it does two things. It has a single variable that is a positive integer. Okay. And then it has two methods. It has a set method and it has a get method. So we can change the state of that positive integer and then we can do a query for it. And it also has an event here called data stored. And we'll touch on that in just a second. But what we see is that this event called data stored, it's emitted every time we call this set method. Uh, and I'll show you why events are so powerful um, directly in Kaleido and then in the scope of that, that full stack application that I touched on. So what I want here is I want this URL. I'm gonna grab the URL. I'm going to click finish here, and then I'm going to create my compilation using that URL. So again, we'll go with ABC. I'm just going to give this a version, version one of simple storage. I'm going to give it the path to that URL, and then I'm going to click finish. And what Kaleido is going to do behind the scenes here, it's going to take that source code, and it's going to do some heavy lifting in Ethereum in the blockchain world. It's actually going to compile this smart contract for us, and it's going to serve us up a set of RESTful endpoints. And this is a really important feature that we have in Kaleido. This is our Kaleido easy button where enterprise organizations, developers of all shapes and sizes don't have to become blockchain and Ethereum experts. Kaleido will compile that smart contract for you. We're going to give you basic REST APIs. And then you at your application tier, all you have to do is submit lightweight arguments to the methods and Kaleido will do all of the nuances of Ethereum, all of those esoteric actions, um, compilation, type mapping, and specifically the management or the sequencing of transactions. Uh, we have tons of signing approaches in this layer. I'm not going to touch on those now, but this is what I'm going to show you here in the console. So this smart contract compiled, and now I can promote it into one of my blockchains or one of my environments. So I'm going to create a name for those APIs. I'm going to click finish, and now I can go ahead and open up all those methods. I can have an open API specification for all those methods that we just looked at inside of that smart contract. So we'll see our set, we'll see our get, and we'll see our query. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to just deploy this smart contract. I'm going to bring it to life using that little ETH connect layer I just showed you. We don't have to use hexadecimal or weird coding formats. We can just use human readable conventions. And I'll just give it a quick little argument to the constructor. One, two, three, click try. And this is something that any you know, high school, collegiate, or entry level programmer could very, very easily code against, just basic REST APIs. So I created a gateway API, I created a compilation, and then within that, we now have an instance of that smart contract. And now I want to show you the events. So this is sort of the bi-directional flow of this REST API gateway. We have that event defined that's going to be emitted every time we invoke our set method in that smart contract. And you can tell Kaleido wherever you want those events to be delivered. And the value of this is you can start automating your back office business processes, and you can have your own rich query layer. You don't have to go into the blockchain to find data. So super quickly, I'll show you how to create an event, and then we'll just subscribe to that method inside of our smart contract. So I'm going to use uh, node number one. We'll just call this request catcher. I have a little um, dummy website that'll just uh, consume the payloads. And now I need the URL where I want that event to be delivered. So here's our request catcher. We'll call this South Carolina 123. And this is the endpoint that Kaleido cares about. Now, this could be using Azure. This could be using AWS and a little serverless function. That's typically how this would be architected in the real world. Um, just for simplicity, I'll show you this approach. You can add security. You can add all sorts of headers inside of this. Uh, we'll just leave this as an open API for this demonstration. And now I just need to add a subscription. So we're going to use that stored data method, or that event, rather. And now Kaleido knows all about these smart contracts that we've created here. We know all about the APIs, so you don't have to teach Kaleido about anything. You just tell it about the signature that you want to subscribe to. You can subscribe to all the signatures or even to a specific smart contract here. And then every time, again, we invoke that set method, this event is going to be delivered. So let me quickly show you that, and then we'll hop to the full stack app and uh, see if there's any questions um, at that point. So I'll go down to my apps and integrations. We'll go to my gateway API, open that up. We'll go into our instance here. We can view that instance. I'm going to view it through node number one again. 
view that API. And now I'm just going to call our set method super quickly right here. So we'll call post on the set method and I'll just give it, uh, what is today's date? The 15th. So we'll give it 15 as the argument here. Go ahead and click invoke. And when this transaction is executed, when it's mined into a block, then that event will be fired and it should be delivered over here into our request catcher. And again, this would be a serverless function. This would be a gateway API inside of AWS or Azure, et cetera. Um, but what we'll see here is we'll actually see the argument that I passed to it. We'll see 15 was passed to that method. Um, okay, so events are very powerful. I wish we had more time to talk about them and their importance in full stack uh, application architecture, um, but we don't. So flying along here, I'm going to switch accounts. I'm going to go into our demos account very, very quickly. And then I'm going to show you a really, really interesting full stack, app full stack application here. So here we are in our demos account. Uh, I'm quickly going to click on this environment just to show you a lot of the other features that we have in Kaleido. So, so many rich metrics on you know, CPU, memory, disk, great for system operators. You can dig as deeply as you want into specific runtimes, whether it's a node or a service. Uh, and you can even dig deeply into the blockchain layer and inspect if you have pending or potentially queued transactions. Uh, tons of other features around apps and integrations and B2B communications, uh, a few of which I'll show you right now. So here's the demo. It's going to be around a private data exchange. So this could be applicable to supply chain, to trade finance, um, to a litany of scenarios where you know, organizations need to securely exchange private data and potentially reference um, some modicum of that data on chain, typically a hash of the data along with some metadata. So we're going to use one critical feature in Collido. It's called our document store service. And this will integrate with your cloud utilities. And it's going to securely allow you to transfer data to counterparts inside of your network. This is all best of breed asymmetric cryptography. Um, don't have time to go into that. Um, but it's also going to incorporate our REST API gateway for easy submission. And it's going to incorporate our event streams. So all these applications, what we call an Ethereum dApps, decentralized applications, can consume these events. So over here, let me switch environments back to the marketplace demo. And we'll look at the data explorer as these transactions are coming in. And what I have is I have three dApps mimicking three organizations inside of your consortium, inside of your business network. Acting as org number one, right? Use your imagination. This could be a finance institution. This could be a uh, clearinghouse. This could be um, a real estate organization. I'm going to publish some information here, some private data. So I'm going to give it some metadata alongside of it. I'll give it an ID, an index here. Then I'll give it a description. We'll just call this private data XYZ123. I think I have a, a dummy file named that. Now I'm going to select the file here um, from my local store here. Example, private data, one, two, three. And this is just dummy text that I uploaded, but this could be you know, supply chain info, pharmaceutical trials, et cetera. And I'm going to publish this to the blockchain. And what's going to happen in real time, thanks to our event streams, is these two dApps, these two organizations, are going to automatically know about that transaction, about that data, as soon as that block is mined and that transaction is executed. So I'll go ahead and submit this. This is an invocation. This is actually a transaction that's going to occur on the blockchain here. And we'll see this come in in real time right there, the publishing of that data. And now these two dApps, these other organizations, they know that that information was made available and made available for purchase. Now we do another thing here in this layer, and I'm almost done, I promise. We, we've, we weave token economics into this paradigm. So this data is not only available, but it's available for purchase. And that's a wonderful thing in Ethereum. This is digital asset constructs, whether they're fungible tokens or non-fungible tokens. So quickly, acting as org number two, what I'm going to do is I'm going to purchase this data for 10 tokens from org number one. And this will be two transactions. This will be a token transfer, and then it'll be an acknowledgement from org number two that they've actually received this data. That's thanks to our document store service. So if we go back in here, here's the token transfer. If we wait just a couple more seconds for our next block to be mined, then we'll see the acknowledgement um, of the receipt of that private data. So there's three transactions. And then the last thing we can do is we can download this, we can inspect it. You know, we love what we see, that's great information. So we'll go ahead and rate it here. We'll give it a five-star rating. That'll be our fourth transaction. And then we can go into, whoops, let me move the zoom bar. We can go into org number three and we'll see that that guy's now notified of this new rating in real time as well. Uh, so that kind of gives you an example of how you could layer together a lot of the components in Kaleido and actually solve um, a very extensible real world problem that's applicable to tons of different verticals and tons of different industries there. Um, so hopefully that was informative and um, provided some good insight and context into Kaleido.
Thanks, Nick. Thanks, Sophia. Uh, happy to have you guys on with the Kaleido demo. Coming up next, we have Jacob Hall with the uh, Gingo demo. I believe Lori Souza is going to be the host for that. Uh, Mark's popping up on screen, which means we are out of time. Uh, we did have some questions. I apologize for not getting to your questions, viewers. This was so much content in 15 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. I'm, I'm hyperventilating over here. So very much appreciate the education, Nick Gatsky. Gasky, sorry. And Sophia Lopez, thank you very much again for coming on. We look forward to the future of blockchain and the future of Kaleido. Thanks so thank much. you, guys. Thank you, Sophia. Yeah, thank you. Nick. That was great. I, I echo Elliot's comments. You picked a lot of material into uh, a very <laughs> small amount of time. Um, I feel a little bit like the Grim Reaper, though. I'm, I'm sort of yanking people off stage prematurely whenever my head shows up. So I'm not, I'm not going to be very welcome, I don't think, anymore. Well, everyone's welcome to reach out to us directly. We'd be happy to answer any questions or talk through use cases or see how Kaleido could support not just the hackathon or the entrepreneurship challenge, but real business projects people in South Carolina are working on. Sure. Yeah, and thank you. Really so much. In just, yeah, I, I mean, it, was just, it got me really interested, in, of course, even just your example of real estate, which is my background, and say, I just need to, I need to make a phone call. We just need to brainstorm a little bit. Great. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we're here. We're here for for everyone. And, yeah, and I might, maybe I'll enter the challenge, Mark. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. hey, I might as well. Hey, why not? Yeah. Hey, what do you have yeah. to lose? So come on, enter the challenge. You might win some money. And if if the worst you can do is meet, what you the know, heck? I got to figure out a way to make money in blockchain somehow. <laughs> yeah. Dude, this labor of love continues. So, <laughs> well, thank, Sophia, you. Nick, thank you so much for your uh, yeah. contribution. For, thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, Thank we'll, you we'll so put much. people in touch with you. We'll, we'll shepherd them your way and they can get on your platform and, and be in contact directly with you. So, sounds great. We're looking forward to it. Great. Bye.